Okay, so it says, so I know that the Hebrew says, God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. A lot of times what they do to try to do the English right is they'll add words. You don't do that to Hebrew. So that's why it's really important to look at different versions in the Bible and see what they really mean and look at the Hebrew too, okay? But this is really important. God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. All right, so Isaac didn't know it yet. <laughs> but, and, and like I said, he wasn't given much time to think about it. But notice what Abraham says. God will provide. That word is Jehovah Jireh. Now, as we've gone through the Bible, we've seen the different names of the Lord. Okay, that they, different revelations that we've seen. But this is a revelation of God. Just like the, if, if you know me as, well, let's say my husband. My husband knows me as his wife. My kids know me as a mother. My clients know me as a hairstylist. So I've got different names. I've got different ways that you know me. Okay? Well, this is what God is. When you know me as a hairstylist, then you can come here and get your hair cut, right? When you know God as God will provide, you can trust him to provide for you. You see? So these revelations are very important. Hmm? Verse 8. Amen. Okay. So, um, what he's saying here when Abraham says God will provide himself for a burnt offering, it means that he will be the offering. And he is prophesying what will happen 4,000 years ago on Calvary. So Abraham knows what's going on. See that? Uh, God told Abraham to take his son and to kill him. Now I want you to put yourself in those shoes. I mean, I was I was trying to meditate this weekend. I was trying to think about I was I was taking every single verse and making sure I extrapolated all the Holy Spirit um, fingers that He wanted me to get out of this. That's kind of what I call it, Holy Spirit fingers. But there's there's deep things in here, and I was just trying to m- just meditate on the fact that I've got my child. And I've made them carry their own wood, and I've taken them up to this altar. And I, we haven't gotten that far, but I have built an altar, and I have laid my child on it. Not only did I lay my child on it, but I have bound my child on that altar. And I saw myself as Abraham with the knife. And I, what I have to do is I have to bring the knife down, kill my child, and burn my child up. That's what God's asking them to do. Could you do it? Even if you knew God. <laughs> so I want you to see the faith that Abraham has. He's like, okay, even if I do all this, God's going to raise him up. Because he's saying it right here. God will provide himself the burnt offering. Okay. So take the very thing that you love more than life itself and kill it. Now, this is not a child, but God did tell me to take my music career and kill it. And I'm going to tell you why tonight. Because you cannot experience resurrection power until you kill something, until it dies. See, Jesus went through all the stuff that he went through. He was, I don't know if you're aware, but I want to, I want to elaborate a little bit because I want to share with you what Jesus said to me one day. He said, you think I was a wimp. Because I did. I mean, I saw him as this skinny little scrawny guy on a cross hanging there. Whoopie do, you know. But I want to tell you what he went through, okay? The Bible says that they they took him, and the first thing they did did to him was pull out his beard. Okay? I went, his beard hair. Now, that was a, what that did was produce shame. Because... A Jew to a Jew, his beard and his hair, it, it, if you take that off, because there's a lot of places in the Bible where they shave them, and it causes shame. That's their purpose, is shame. Okay? So they pulled his beard out, one by one. Okay? Then what they did, 40 men in the, in the um, at Caiaphas' house, they beat him. Now, guys, I don't know about you, but... One person beats you and you don't fight back. That's a beating. But 40 men. I'm sitting there imagining this this weekend. I'm sitting there, you know, they're kicking him. Have you ever seen somebody just whoop on somebody? And they don't fight back. They just lay there. 
They beat him. And then they took him and they and they put the crown of thorns on his head. And they that wasn't enough. They pushed it down, but then they took a, a um, reed and they beat it into his head. And there was a reason for all of this. It was all so that we could be free. Everything that he went through, it's just like this story, everything he experienced was to set us free. I'll come back to that. But then they, they beat the, the crown of thorns into him. Then that wasn't enough. They took him and they put him on the whooping post. And you saw in Passion of Christ. I couldn't even watch the whole thing. It was just tearing me up. But they took him and his hands are here. I mean, your mama ever spank you? Would, would they, they say you put your hands somewhere else on the bed or whatever and you have to just, ooh, I can't stand that. I got to dance around and put my hands back there. And if I put my hands back there, I got more, didn't I? So they put his hands on the whooping post and they just, and and they didn't just spank him with a, a whip. It was a cat of nine tails. It had had shard in it. It had glass in it. It had metal. And they would hit him and rip his skin. Okay. And then this is they, in the Passion of Christ. I don't know if this is true, but they turned him over, and then they whipped him again. Probably so. But he got thirty nine lashes. Okay. Now, after you've had your beard pulled out and the crown of thorns and beaten by 40 men and that, you'd be dead, wouldn't you? I'd be like, please just let me die. <laughs> Guys, he wasn't a wimp. He was a carpenter. And they didn't have power tools back then. So he had muscles. He wasn't as they depict him. So much so that after all that, he carried his cross. And I've been there, up the Via Della Rosa. It does just like this. And this is the Mount Moriah. It's a hill. Up the Via Della Rosa to the top. And then he laid back, and they nailed a nail here. And he knew what was coming in this hand. <laughs> and they nailed him there. And then they nailed his feet there. And then they hung him on the cross. But let me tell you something. This is what he said to me but I still didn't die. The, the way that crucifixion victims die is that they, they're they nailed and their feet are nailed and they can't get their breath. They, they, they die of suffocation because they can't get their breath. They can't lift up. Jesus didn't die like that. It's a proven fact that Jesus died of a broken heart. And that's why when they came to him, he was already dead and they pierced his side and water flew out, flowed out the reason why water flowed out was because his heart was broken. That literally is how he died. So all those things that, you know, happened to him, that's not what killed him. Our sins on a holy, perfect sacrifice is what killed him. And so I want you to really get these pictures because I'm going to show you something tonight you may have never heard before. So it says that um, it says after these things, like we talked about in verse one, what things? Let's talk about the a few things that Abraham went through. Step one: he was told to leave his country, leave the place where you've grown up and called home, and go to the place I tell you to go to. Okay? And he was fifty year old, fifty years old. <laughs> it's not a major challenge, but it's a challenge. Okay? He was also told to leave his nephew. And to his nephew, he gave up his best land, he thought. You know, God gave it back to him. But he told him to choose which way you want to go. You choose the best land for yourself. And Abraham was willing to take the less. Okay? Um, he, he told him to be a sojourner, which means that all around him, people were building homes. They were, they were anchoring themselves you know, giving themselves security in their homes and all that. God told him, he said, this is not your home. So he had to sojourn everywhere he went. He told him to circumcise his skin and all of his household. And we talked about what that meant. It meant that you were, it really was meaning you were to separate yourself from the world. This was a way of separating yourself. It's not the act of circumcision on your flesh although it was a reminder every day that he saw it he's like okay 
I'm separated. 